coaches questions here? I guess what stands out about Utah is you break them down, obviously, a lot of new faces. Yeah, um, like us in some ex inexperience, uh, but different in us, too, and that very very big, long. You know, they've got three centers that are 6'11", 6'11", 7'4", so they've got size. Um, you see great size, and some of their inexperience, um, though it's inexperience like freshmen, We've got freshmen, they've got freshmen, some of their freshmen have been on missions for a couple of years, so they're, they're juniors in age. So they're a little bit more experienced than what we have, but very similar in not a lot of guys. They've, had, they've got really Batten, Gatch, and uh, Allen, who have played minutes, and we have Niz and Jazz and Lindsey, who have played minutes, even though Lindsey's been out for over a year. So very similar that way, um, but uh, their size, their length, um, I don't want to stand around and look at their size and length. We've got to make sure that we try to execute and do the things that we want to do. You can see a ton of post size in your two exhibition games. I mean, right. how, how well do you? That's and that's the, if there's a little bit of a concern, we basically played two teams that at times had five guards out on the court, and you know we're not going to really see that. Now you get a you're getting a power five conference type of team that's got great size. You got Allen at. 6'7", Gatch is at 6'6", 6'7", uh, who's, I think, an incredible uh, player. So you've got two guards uh, in the starting lineup, 6'6", 6'7". Um, we can't put a guard out there of that size. You know, so how we handle that versus playing against a couple teams that we're really playing 6'2", six six guards, playing against that, uh, it's a little bit different. You know, so I think the backboard's going to be a huge concern. We've got to do a good job uh, of rebounding. Um, and I like, I like how their bigs run. And, and that's always been something we're trying to develop with our young bigs, uh, how you run the floor both offensively and defensively. So I think that's going to be a big key in this game too. Now you've seen your guys play a couple games. What's the thing that's been most impressive to you or the thing you're pleased with most about your team heading into the opener? Uh, that We've had adversity in both games. Uh, the start of the, the game on the 18th. Uh, against East Bay, we had a bad start. Uh, it was 08, and then we went on 27-7 run. So it, we had adversity hit us at the beginning of the game, and the guys handled that adversity, which I was probably most impressed with that than anything else in the in the game that happened, just because the majority of them had no idea how to handle those things. Um, so that was impressive. Uh, and then in game two, the adversity didn't hit us until the start of the second half. So it was really good first half. And they went in the locker room, felt good about themselves. And instead of being focused coming out of the halftime, uh, it was, hey, let's pat ourselves on the back. And a 20-point game became 10 pretty quickly. And they responded again. So hopefully these are lessons as we just build the season that they can understand that that's, that's why it's 40 minutes. It's whether it's something bad that's happening or something good that's happening, you got to stay focused on what the game plan is, stay focused and concentrate. We say it all the time that uh, of any word you can pick in our game, um, concentration is something that we talk about every single day. Um, players that know how to concentrate are players that know how to get the job done. And when you, when you shut down the concentration, that's when you miss free throws. That's when you miss out of bounds assignments. That's when you come out of timeouts and you have breakdowns, or you come out of uh, half times and have breakdowns. So the ability to concentrate over a two-hour frame. Um, that's why I'm an avid golfer. I love golfers because they're doing it for four hours. Uh, race car drivers, you know, they're incredible athletes. To be able to concentrate in those elements for as long as they have to do it, when the danger they have to do it, I've always had a great appreciation of athletes that know how to concentrate at a high level. Coach, you've been doing this for so long, but I'm curious, when a season starts, are there any butterflies still in oh, anticipation? Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I moved here and now I got a sleep number bed. So I, I noticed and, and I got an app and I'm terrible at apps. I'm not a technology guy. I'm, I still write things down in notebooks. And my son who's on staff is like, Dad, it can be all right here. I'm like, well, I have no idea how to do that. So I need a notebook. But my sleep number is going down. So I'm not getting the sleep that I was getting uh, a month ago. But uh, that's the excitement of a season. You know, this is – the 29th overall for me just in this business. And you still get very excited, but I think from a coaching standpoint, the excitement turns to a lot of anxiousness at times as well because we're going into this thing really not knowing what Utah is going to do. Uh, so you don't have your normal scout uh, and, and that prep time as a coach to know, hey, this is what's going to be thrown at us. You just don't know. That's what opening games are. 
And likewise, as well as you know your team, we're 30-some practices in. I don't know what's going to happen with them either and because I know that they're anxious. I know yesterday we didn't have the best of practices, and I think it's they're overwhelmed with just the excitement of, hey, this is a chance to win the 19th in a row at home and, and set a school record, and this is my first college basketball game. And so as a coach, you're trying to, hey, let's be excited, but let's – Let's also be calm enough to do the job that we're supposed to be doing. So that's what I always find exciting. And then it's – call me crazy. I, I like seeing young people get in these situations and just see what they're going to do. Uh, sometimes it's comical and sometimes it drives you nuts. But that's what keeps us doing this thing. Speaking of excitement, what kind of atmosphere are you expecting tomorrow in Lawler? Well, I hope it's great. You know, it's a it's a neat opportunity. It's a midweek. You know, it's the opening night of college basketball. You got a double header where you got the the men and the women playing the same night. So there's a lot of a lot of enthusiasm. You got the women opening up their season. You got the men opening up their season. Um, and you look at the games across the country. Wow. Uh, I, I haven't seen the women's side yet, but I know the men's side. You know, when you've got one versus two, three versus four uh, on opening night, um, that that's exciting. And we've been two weeks now into the – to almost three weeks now into the NBA season. So it's nice now to get college basketball going and for us to be doing that on opening night, doing it with a Pac-12 opponent, uh, a record on the line, uh, unveiling banners from last year. New team, uh, just a lot of excitement with that, and we're pretty excited to be a part of it. You mentioned those nerves and anxiety for you know those players in the season opening for yourself. How do you handle that or approach that uh, from that standpoint? Yeah, uh, trusting your staff for one. We've had staff meetings of just you know like we've had two exhibition games. We've I think we've had two different times guys have checked in just out of a timeout. They sit down. They don't even go to the scores table. So it's just having guys aware of everything because it's openers. You you got to make sure shot clock is. You got game management doing what's right. So you got you got guys on our staff that's going to be checking a lot of things, timeouts, shot clock. The shot clock rule now changes; it resets to twenty. Uh, so are, is is game management resetting it to twenty? Um, you know, you've got fouls that you got to keep track of, and guys are doing this for the first time on the floor. So there's just a lot that the staff is trying to look at, and yet you got to stay focused on, hey, this is how Utah's hurting us. This is how we're hurting them. How can we do more? or less of both of those things. So openers always, you got bats flying around. I mean, you just don't know what's going to happen in an opener. That's what's, that's what's fun about the opener. Uh, I still say there's a basket at one end that doesn't sound right. Uh, I've been saying that, but uh, I'm a shooter. I, I don't like hitting the rim, but when you hit the front edge of that rim at that one end, it sounds funny. And I don't like it. But it's just me. But so there's a lot of things with the opener that you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, and you just hope it goes smoothly enough. And all the issues that you have, in the end, you get a win. That, that's what makes the openers a lot more fun. You're obviously down to nine scholarship players eligible this year. What, what is your ideal rotation like, uh, you know, just as you go through a season? Well, the exciting part is all nine of them are in it. And that's fun, you know, to especially in year one where you don't have – um, you don't have issues where the 10th or 11th guy uh, has been busting their tail in practice and probably warrants minutes, but you don't have the ability to play 11 guys. You know, I think anywhere from you know eight, 8 to 10 is, is ideal. 10 gets a little bit harder just because guys want minutes. Um, but nine is a very manageable number. Now we got to stay healthy. That's always you know crucial. You got to stay healthy with it. But uh, I like these nine. They've been busting their tail. They all deserve it. You got Warren and Dez who are sitting out, so they're getting a lot of run in practice. So I think it's going to be a good year for those two to develop in practice. And then the games, hopefully these nine guys know, I'm going to get my minutes. I'm going to be on the rotation. The minutes are really of how many minutes I get are going to be de determined by my production. And as a player, I think that's all you want. You want the opportunity. You want the chance. And then if you don't produce, you got to live with the consequences of minutes – rotating one or the other, but at least you know I'm playing. And I, ha I control that a little bit. So I think that's the positive going in. The negative is that you've settled into a nine-man rotation, but you got 10, 11, 12, 13 waiting in case something happens. We don't really have that luxury of having those guys in line waiting yet. What have been your impressions of Lindsay and how um, close to 100% or rust-free he's been? Oh, I, I mess with him all the time because he's been 100% 100% in my mind since August. 
but <laughs> now he's playing 100%. Uh, Lindsey's one of those guys, I think, that uh, the closest it gets to games, he, uh, he goes to another level. And I think that's what's been fun to watch him in the two exhibition games uh, from the first exhibition game to the second exhibition game, he's just been really good. And as we've gotten closer to the season, you've seen Lindsey kind of elevate his game to where I think people here are used to watching him. Um, and that's been exciting for us because uh, it's been obviously slow getting there because when we got here, he was in rehab. And so it was all about us knowing about Lindsey but not being on the court seeing him. And now as we've gotten closer to the games, he's – like I tr like I said in the beginning, just through what everybody had seen, talked to me about, he's got the potential to be the best point guard in this league. And he's healthy right now, and we're going to need that. You know, those uh, those guards are going to be crucial for us. You know, when you look at what we're doing early in the season, Lindsey, Jazz, Jalen, and Niz, uh, there's a lot on those guys who are juniors and seniors. That's where our experience is. That's where our age is. We need those four guys leading the best they can, and then we need J.C. to help our – we got a very young front court that I'm very excited about in the future, but J.C.'s got to do a good job of leading that front court because J.C.'s got good experience coming in. Which of the two rims do you think sounds funny? Which of what? The two rims you said one sounds funny? Um, and it would be the – if I got my direction right, Amanda might know. North? Is it – No. Bench? Opposite, yeah, my bench. Is that north? West. Huh? West. West. Yeah. West. Sound good. But I'm, I'm weird that way. I'm weird that way because um, I and I tell our guys that don't listen to me. I've always I've always paid attention to the net. That was the thing I always focused on and tried to concentrate on. But the sound of that is annoying to me. So. I guess maybe you just try harder not to hit the front edge of that rim. The back edge and the sides sound exactly right. The front edge does not sound right to me. Uh, as far as the home court advantage, you mentioned the record you guys will be playing for. How important is that just to being so dominant at home when you try and build a program that is one of the best programs? Yeah, and there's a fine line. We're trying not to put like undue pressure on our guys because we are getting an untypical – this is not your typical home opener uh, playing a team out of the Pac-12. So uh, we get that and – Nevada beat Utah last year at Utah. So, you know, there's there's just a lot that comes into this that makes it very difficult. Uh, and yet we told our team last night that here you're going to have many opportunities throughout the year. But from day one, uh, on the 5th of November, you got a chance to, to do something that hadn't been done. And that's to be a part of a team that helped create 19 in a row. And for this new team to have all that that could take place right from the beginning, that's that's a good accomplishment. Now – in saying that, if it doesn't happen, it's not going to be the end of what these guys are doing or what this program's going to do. Um, we're just building this thing. But it is nice to have that right as a carrot right from the beginning that, you know, we could do something that's not been done or at least been part of something that hasn't been done yet. And this team, being brand new, has a chance to do that. And we had a lot of guys, as you know, sitting out last year that they had to watch those guys that are creating this atmosphere. And now you're, now you're plugged into it they should have that urgency to continue that. Um, and so hopefully, you know, as a coach, there's a fine line of not putting that kind of pressure on them because they're not ready for that yet. Uh, but it is nice having it, I think. What are the pros and cons of opening with the Power Five? Would that not be your preference? Do you like being able to get their attention? Well, we, were, we had a hard time scheduling um, that game for sure um, and even in a window that would work. And so I know they were they had schedule issues where they were trying to fit us in because they obviously owed us the return home game um, and what we already had contracted out. Uh, and it just it fit for them. Most importantly, that they didn't really have another date. This was the, really the one date that they could play. So um, it, it worked for us. Um, it's pros and cons. You know, I, I think the pros are they should this should be a sellout crowd. This should be you're you're getting you're getting a big time school coming in. This isn't your typical you know, three-directional school that you're playing in an opener. Uh, you're, you're getting to play a team out of the Pac-12. And uh, so I think that's a – you're going to find out right where you're at. You know, you're going to get a good litmus test on um, – of where you are as a basketball team, and you're going to get a good 40-minute gauge in film of what were you were exposed in. Uh, you know, it's – because a lot of openers so – sometimes your openers are – like our exhibition season, you're playing against five guards. And it's not really a good litmus test because you're not going to play against – four guards that are 6'5 and under, and then a 6'8 center. Uh, I think it's been hard on KJ. 
KJ hasn't really guarded a true center yet. He's going to do that against Utah. So we'll get a better feel of where KJ is, where where JC is in just playing against centers. Because we really haven't played against the center yet. And I think that's a lot you get a lot of those games in the non conference and this one's very different from that. How much do you think your guys are driven by trying to keep the Nevada brand where it is now? I and mean, a lot of them have talked about we don't want it to be the Martin twins left and Jordan Caroline left and then the program fell off. Yeah, I don't that hasn't been really talked about. Uh, you know, they're following them. because um, the Hornets were on TV the other night. Um uh, we had that on in the locker room or where we were eating. So I, the guys were watching that, you know, and, and just commenting on how cool it was uh, to see him out there playing. But I think what they have left is where we've seen them motivated. It's been – as all the all the teams I've had as far as guys working and wanting to get in the gym, this team's at, at one of the top. I mean, they love to play. They love to get in the gym. They love to watch film. Uh, it's encouraging as a coach to know how much they want to learn and how much they want to get better. Uh, and that's a positive. You know, we've had three, four guys calling us today wanting more information on Utah. And that gets hard because we're like, <laughs> they're in Salt Lake. I mean, it's like, because there's just not any film. There's just not much film on them because uh, it's the opener for them. So they played a scrimmage in one exhibition game. So, uh, but it's good when you got players that are in, that engaged. So, but my job is to make sure it's there is a fine line continuing what's been established in the last three years, but not making every game the end all to where if something doesn't go right, um, it crushes them for what they're trying to build because they're all doing this for the most part for the first time. And it's not easy as a coach, but we've got to be patient. Uh, we got to still be demanding. Uh, there's got to be consequences on not doing it right. But we also have to be patient and that a lot of these guys are doing it for the first time. Coach, what's the one thing that the guys have picked up that you've been surprised by? And what's the one thing you feel like they're, for lack of a better word, lagging in? Um, I think we've gotten better with, with the value of the ball. Um, we were taking awful shots in early October. Um, and guys were getting frustrated because they missed shots. And I said, hey, shooting is a pretty easy deal when you do it the right way of just understanding good shot, bad shot. And we get a little bit impatient, uh, and we take the first available shot that's not always the best shot. I'm all about playing fast. I'm all about taking the first available shot if it's a high percentage shot. So I think the guys are learning what good shot, bad shot is. I think that's still a work in progress. Uh, our, our shot percentage actually went down in the second game from the first game, uh, but we got a lot of runouts in game one. So it's a little bit misleading. We got – a lot of dunks and a lot of layups as far as jump shooting uh it went down i thought that's one of the things we've really worked on is that our shot selection didn't improve much um we don't want to be a team that's taken 5 10 15 bad shots because we got a lot of guys that can make shots um, so if we just take good shots then i think we got a chance to be good offensively uh, it helps us with value of the ball getting the ball going right and left getting some ball reversals playing inside out that's all going to be something that's going to take some time Defensively, we saw a lot of good strides from game one to game two. Uh, now hopefully we see that again against uh, obviously a much, much better and bigger Utah team. Coach, you're coming up on about seven months here at Nevada. How would you characterize uh, that time so far? Oh, well, it's been incredible. I haven't, I haven't lost the game yet, so it's been it's been a great seven months. Uh, but, you know, it's it's been fun. I, I've said it umpteen times. Uh, the people here have been incredible. Uh, it's been a terrific community. It's great. You know, just getting back in a community, getting involved in the community. We've made the move as a family um, and just doing all the things that you like to do in a neighborhood and the community has been a lot of fun. And the people here have been incredible. Uh, and now you were hired seven months ago to coach basketball. We've actually been doing it for seven months because there's no off season now anymore in coaching. But now you get to tip it up and you actually get to play games. And that's going to be we haven't had that atmosphere yet. Uh, all of it has been in either a booster dinners or lunches or breakfast or a meeting here or there. Now you get to do it in an environment that you really enjoy when it comes down to coaching, and that's what we're excited about. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you.